Feed is a movie about food and what happens when you eat too much of it. Thanks for watching my video. Feed is also a movie about Australians and the extreme danger that they pose to society. The movie begins with a charming young gentleman named Michael returning home from a long day out with a large fast food order for his large fast food eater. And by that I mean he proceeds to get absolutely naked and add extra garlic mayo to everything. Ah uh, yes, this is going to be a very normal movie. After witnessing most Europeans' idea of an American dinner, we then see a man named Philip, an Australian cybercrime police officer, not in Australia, but in fact, in Germany. Indicated by the fact that the entire screen is now covered with a dark blue hue, because that's exactly how Germany looks in real life. He's been working with the German authorities to track down a suspect, and enters the house to find the man's German Frankfurt cooking on the stove, before being jump scared by the absolutely terrifying sight of a German. After heading upstairs, he walks into the bathroom to come across the incredibly normal German activity of one horribly injured man being consensually fed his own body parts as he grips his phantom genitals. A scene directly inspired by the very real story of a German man named Armin Muse, otherwise known as the Rottenberg Cannibal, who met up with another man via the internet and consensually consumed his penis before murdering and eating him, otherwise known as the average German dinner. Back in Australia after four months away, we see Philip struggling to sleep with his girlfriend on account of constantly being able to smell that man's frying penis, before we're then introduced to his co-worker Nigel, as these two are apparently are Sydney's entire cybercrime division, and for some reason they can just afford to send one of them gallivanting off around the world to sniff a man's junk. While actually doing some cybercrime work, they come across the feeder community, a group of people who take pleasure in watching their partners become larger and more dependent on them, sometimes to the point where the only thing that they're able to perform on their own is cardiac arrest. After a while of looking around online, they come across a website that's run by Michael, before immediately being caught by him and kicked off the website, who then tracks them down in a matter of seconds to Sydney's cybercrime division, because apparently these incredibly professional computer experts couldn't figure out how to turn their VPN on. Unlike you, because this video is sponsored by… no one. But maybe consider checking out the Patreon or becoming a YouTube member for uncensored versions of videos. I need to fund my feeding habit. They're then convinced that the owner is hiding something other than his questionable browser history, when we then see Michael having a flashback of how this all started, as he's a little boy being forced to feed his immobile, morbidly obese mother out of fear that she may one day consume him. It's always the ones with the mummy issues. Philip, apparently needing something slightly questionable to get off to, is back on the website later and sees a video of Michael from behind as he jumps on top of a woman before force feeding her through a funnel, clearly unbothered by the fact that he has very visible, identifiable tattoos. Or perhaps he's just so narcissistic to think that no one would ever come after him for what he gets up to. Look, it's between two consenting adults. If one of them is emotionally manipulated and gaslit into submission by a narcissist who tricks them into eating themselves to death, well then that's up to them. Philip and Nigel then begin to suspect Michael of being a serial killer due to the sheer amount of cereal he makes these women consume. As well as all of the women who appear on the website tend to hit a certain weight and then completely disappear to then be replaced. After trying to be granted the green light to pursue this case, Philip's forcibly told to take a month off work due to the effects of the Germany case and his now new extreme phobia of the German population. Philip then wakes up the next morning to find out that his girlfriend has left him. It must be something to do with the extreme aggressiveness and blatant emotional neglect. But I'm no expert in women. They scare me and steal locks of my hair for demonic rituals. A week passes and Michael's partner Deirdre is somehow still alive, but apparently her bed isn't, as Michael has been forced to somehow move her to a different property that she doesn't seem to like very much. It smells weird and I need to consume an infant to be satiated. Despite Philip being told to stay away from that case, he's taken that as a personal challenge to be as physically close to the case as possible and has jumped on a plane to fly over to the United States after finding an IP address of a site admin where he then proceeds to immediately crush a cockroach. Some extra protein. After tracking the IP address to a physical address, he ends up in Michael's mother's house, where he comes across one of the most disturbing and disgusting things a person could ever see. A Bible. After finding what church it's from, he ends up tracking down a Father Turner to learn that after Michael's mother passed away before she was able to consume him, they looked after him for a while, right up until they discovered that he was a distinguished man of culture who liked to jack it to people's feet. Philip then speaks to the man's daughter, who still refers to Michael as her brother despite her feet being exceptionally sticky still, and gives him the address of his home. And while waiting outside of the house, he spots and recognises Michael as apparently Philip never forgets an ass, before then waiting for him to leave and breaking in to find his secret stash of foot pictures. Once he's in and committing a felony, for no other reason than this dude likes heavier chicks and must be stopped, 
He's caught as a woman walks into the house and spots him standing over Michael's computer. An immediate red flag for Philip, considering that this woman can actually walk. After chasing her outside, he finds Michael, as well as his wife Mary, standing right next to him. Confused as to why Michael is showing any interest in a woman even capable of standing, we learn that this entire series of events was orchestrated. Michael knew that Philip was following him and set it up in such a way that he made sure that his wife would walk into the house and catch him red-handed, as his other hand was down his trousers while his eyes were pointed at the foot pictures. Which seems to suggest that Michael is quite confident in manipulating situations to play out the way that he wants. Almost as if that having a wife that doesn't fit in with what he's clearly interested in is a great way to subvert anyone's expectations that may suspect him of being up to something, leaving him looking from the outside in as if he's just your average everyday church-going man who for some reason feels the need to dye his hair bright blonde. Another indicator towards all of this being quite clearly set up is that Michael then proceeds to give an almost rehearsed speech as he casually and nonchalantly explains everything away, stating that there's absolutely nothing illegal about what he's doing. But Philip, wanting all of the bigger girls for himself, lunges towards Michael before being slapped in the face like a naughty little disobedient boy. After quite literally running away after being hilariously slapped, the next morning, Michael shows up at Philip's door and offers him breakfast and a coffee which Philip, clearly still concussed by the light slapping that grazed his face, decides that it'd be a great idea to begin consuming it. You know, the food that was just handed to him by a suspected serial killer. Which funnily enough, in a plot point that absolutely nobody saw coming, Philip begins to lose consciousness as Michael talks about how he liberates women. He sets them free from the societal standards of needing to follow fashion trends and needing to be a certain size. Instead, setting them free from their internal stomach lining as he quite literally feeds them until it bursts open. After almost giving Philip a cute little kiss for some reason, Michael decides to leave him a present in the form of an unidentified liquid being injected directly into his stomach, causing Philip to wake up later on to find out that he's spontaneously grown an extra ball bag, but this time filled with pus. Oh, not again. After slicing it open for all of that delicious custard to come out, he gains access to the restricted part of the website to discover that people are betting on when these women are going to die, followed by him then watching a video of Michael filming one of the women having a heart attack and dying. He's profiting from the death of these women, which causes Philip to do perhaps the most American thing that he possibly could think of. Buy a gun. While Michael is testing whether or not Deidre is the throat goat by ramming plastic tubes down her neck, Philip has the perfectly sane and rational idea to kidnap Michael's wife from church and force her to watch all of his degenerate content. Which unsurprisingly, she proceeds to explain away as something else, as much like all of the women that Michael is involved with, their feet are sticky and their minds are warped due to constant manipulation. After finding out that all of the women featured on Michael's site have been confirmed missing, Michael's wife gives him the address of another house, Michael's mother's farmhouse, which we see Michael and Deirdre at having the absolute time of their life as they're having a little pre-heart attack buggy. You gotta get the blood pumping. After he impulsively bites her, as if this well-covered facade is starting to show its cracks right towards the end, he makes her beg for the tube before bringing a new meaning to the term deep throat as he then pours his slop concoction inside. After heading over to the farmhouse to see that all of the farm animals have already been consumed, we see Michael violently rip the tube out of Deirdre's throat as she starts choking because she is indeed not the throat goat. But what she is, is starting to have a heart attack as she begins to feel unwell and struggle to breathe. That not being Philip's problem, he sneaks into the trash-filled house, finds a pile of human remains, and points the gun at Michael, which he sees as the perfect time to show off his amazing ballerina moves as he jumps off the balcony, doing a cute little twirl as he goes. Philip, firing off multiple shots at the man for daring to have such glamorous dance moves, chases him outside and into a room containing a frail old man. Michael's dad, who's been laying there for 20 years, who pays absolutely no role towards the plot whatsoever, as he's never once mentioned or seen ever again. Michael pushes Philip into the pots of boiling liquid that he was creating for Deirdre before explaining that he's discovered the ultimate fat loss technique, cut it off with a kitchen knife and boil it down to a liquid. Michael forces each and every one of his victims to consume the previous one, as apparently having a foot fetish does indeed rot the brain. After knocking Philip out, he wakes up on a bed next to Deirdre, for some reason not restrained because Michael's far too cool to worry about silly little things like consequences. After forcing him to feed the slop to Deirdre, Michael admits to killing his own mother and carving all of the fat from her body simply because he wanted to, right before pretending to shoot Deirdre, immediately followed by him profusely apologising to her as he tells her how much he loves her, which he decides to prove by attempting to suffocate her to death with a pillow, simply to show Philip that he can. 
A struggle then ensues, and Philip managed to get hold of the gun by retrieving it from Deirdre's waste bucket, and even after everything that Michael has done and admitted to right in front of Deirdre, he's manipulated and warped her brain to the point where she still views Philip as the bad guy. And after she repeatedly screams at Philip, telling him to leave, he points the gun towards her and pulls the trigger, because he doesn't like it when women have opinions. It then cuts to black, multiple gunshots are heard, and we then see Philip living the American dream with his new partner, Michael's sister. That woman he met one time and spoke to for about two minutes. It really is that easy, guys. He then drives back to Michael's farmhouse, where we then see Deirdre rotting in the bed, before it's revealed that Michael is still alive. But barely. He's being kept alive by Philip, who's kept him prisoner and has begun slowly starving him to death, as he sits there like the Chad that he is, eating a sandwich made by Michael's sister. And after making Michael beg for it, just how he made the women beg for food, the movie then comes to its rather confusing end. Rather confusing in the sense that I'm left wondering why it even exists, and what happened to Michael's wife that Philip kidnapped and left in the car as he shot Deirdre, a point that I should probably not think too hard about, and just sit back and relax and be happy that we all made it to the end of this. The end of this, which I sadistically brought all of you along for. So before this video comes to an end, I'd like to just give a massive shout out to all of my YouTube members and patrons. The people who every month, despite YouTube making it incredibly obvious that they're not exactly fond of the type of content I make, continue to support the channel and help things keep going. If you're interested in becoming a YouTube member or a patron yourself, not only are you just helping support the channel, but you also get access to some nice perks, like being granted access to the private Discord server, where you can then get access to all uncensored versions of videos going forwards. So starting off with this week's new YouTube member signups, a big thank you to JulieNot666, Mike Violic, Mattye, Leonie Thide, Simon, Simon Stark, Brawl, and Max. And heading over to this week's new Patreon signups, a big thank you to Mevo, Apollo Jones, Big Man, Shy Cameron, Michael Jones, Daniel Harris, Joshua Baldwin, Anaya Jenkins, Dill, Mr. Bubbles, Samuel Wallace, Jay Weezy, Kai Frontman, Taser, Jaden Franklin, Blue Meat, and James Davis. So once again, a massive thank you to all YouTube members and patrons, and a big shout out to everyone else for watching.